Yeah. All right, Christina. You, you have an empty glass, which I'm proud of you for. I'm not, I'm not upset. Yeah, we got another drink coming for you. You just drink so quick. But you're such a weirdo, okay? <laughs> you really are, and I am so excited because you are going to totally let that out. But first, people need to understand how successful of a weirdo you are. So our next guest was not in the fashion space two years ago, but she is now, and she is now an expert in fashion technology, and you are now the host of a podcast called Refashion.co, and you have even interviewed the chief of, or the editor and chief of Vogue. Big deal, really big deal. So please put your hands together for Christina Katana. Thank you very much for coming out, I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. All right, so let's start. Let's just start by talking about how weird you are, because you like you, you think you're gonna be some. So you think you can dance, master, but in your own head, but not in reality. Is that what I've heard? Um, absolutely. Um, I love the show. So you think you can dance? I wish that I was a dancer, but I'm the worst person on the dance floor. I love to interpret it, dance with my friends. And what do you like to interpret? My feelings. Okay. <laughs> okay, all right, I like it. Okay, so tell me about these crazy dance parties you have. Um, you know, you have a girlfriend over here on the keyboard just stroking the keys. We're <laughs> what? Okay, yeah, just stroking the you mean pressing them down? No. Or Okay, no, stroking the keys. Right, okay. Stroking the so keys. So no music. No. No, there's music coming out of the keyboard. There's music coming out of the keyboard and out of our um, out of out of our, our, our phones, <laughs> and out of our bodies. Great, great, great. Okay, um, wow, that really, this is a terrible start, but we're going to get over it. We're going to get over it. Okay, so you love, you love crafts also, right? Like, you like sticking yeah. stickers on stuff and, like, cutting things out with paper, right? Yes, I'm in Las Vegas, and I'm probably the only person that made sure to bring my glue stick. Right. And you said there's glitter on you all the time. Yes. I love to craft. Does, is that a problem? Does anyone have a problem with her crafting? No. Maybe we'll no. We've got a, there's a crafter back there. <laughs> oh, good. We got you a drink. Okay, now it's time for the real interview. All again. right. Like okay, so let's talk, let's talk about uh, some of this entrepreneurship stuff. So you sure. um, have been focused on fashion, but also especially female entrepreneurs and like female leadership. So tell me a little bit about um, how you can, um, or just tell, tell me about what leadership looks like. Sure. So, um, like Dylan said, I'm focused on the fashion industry, specifically with tech entrepreneurs in the fashion space. So what that looks like for me is a lot of female entrepreneurs in the house. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, with the fashion industry, as we all know, there's lots and lots of um, influencers. You know, Chanel says jump, the world jumps. So. What that looks like for, for fashion technology um, in, this, in, this, in the context of leadership, for me, is really empowering people to be that leadership that can really transform the industry, transform people in business, transform the world. Ooh. Okay, so let's say a female entrepreneur, how many do we have in Ooh. Samsung? Okay. That's pretty good. Um, yeah. What, okay, and then what about anybody who's female and um, is part of a startup, like any kind of high risk downtown deal? Okay, should be at least as many, but yeah. that's okay. It's all right, it's not a problem. Um, okay, so what have you um, learned about where the boundaries are in fashion? Like, because I don't quite know, does it, is it just clothes? Like, or does it, is like, is it decorating this room? And like, is that all fashion? Or where does it kind of end? And where um, are the boundaries that people can push? <laughs> Sure. No, fashion is absolutely um, self-expression. Oh. Right? Oh, it's as big as self-expression. Yeah. Okay. It's, it is who you are as a person. It is the lifestyle that you create for yourself. It's who you embody. It's what you stand for. It's the ethics that you live by. It's the connections that you want to create. Fashion, to me, um, is, is, is all of that. So... Did that answer the question? Well, yeah, no, it did. But what's fashion tech? Like, where do you start? Sure. Like, because I mean, I understand fashion is just everything that's magical about the world. But like, what is, where does the tech come into that? The, the way that tech comes into place is really how can we use technology to further the industry? So what technologies can we build to, con to connect retailers to the con their consumers? 
um, what technologies can we build to have the consumers connect to what the value, what the actual brand values are for for those brands. Um, and so what it really does do for the industry is it, I guess I'm saying connect a lot, it creates connection, powerful yeah. connection and community. And what it does is it, 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 it strengthens um, what the brands stand for and it allows for, um, I'm just speaking in no, circles no, no, now. Yeah, so I'm getting through what you're saying is like, it's really about the fashion part of it, sort of like the feeling that you have and the technology is really about how to broadcast it to as many people as possible it's and how, you, yeah. how to get the message out. It's how you can broadcast it. It's how you can strengthen your brand by creating community engagement, um, understanding where your traffic's coming from, measurement, data. It's no longer about intuition, guys. Like fashion has been rooted on intuition and what buyers say, what editors say, but now consumers have a say in what's going on in, in, in this world. Um, consumers are getting smarter. The fashion industry is now stepping up. Okay, so describe the fashion industry. What does it look like right now? The fashion industry right now is getting smarter. Um, and the reason why is that there's lots of female entrepreneurs coming to the plate. Woo! Um, yeah, yep. female entrepreneurs, they understand emotion. They understand what's going on. Um, business isn't just about numbers and data. That's very important, but it's also about um, emotion and really connection. So with fashion technology, you have the, the best of both worlds. You have the data points, you have the measurement, you have the, sti the statistics. And you also have the emotion and um, the connection. Um, right now, fashion is is pushing forward. Both communities are coming together. We've got the tech industry and the fashion communities want to working want to work together. The fashion industry is sharing their historical knowledge, what's going on, what has been going on, and the tech industry is like awesome. What are the challenges that you're facing? Um, how can we help your business move forward? Let's work together and um, make some shit happen. Okay, deal. So can guys get in on this or? Just There's like tons. Or? There are tons of guys in the fashion tech space, and that's what's so great about fashion tech is that it's not just like you know this type of person. Um, it's so diverse. What's you, this? This type of person? Oh, you just point. That was a queen. Okay, sorry. <laughs> that was like. Oh, you're talking I, about I was, yourself, was, like this. <laughs> or are you I was about pushing up my noses? invisible glasses. Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought small noses. <laughs> yeah. Not small, small noses. But yeah. Invisible glasses. Yeah, Ner no guys. Nerds, nerds, guys. guys no, and that's what's so great is that you we're bringing together these two communities, um, which historically probably would have never worked together, um, and what that looks like is endless possibility, right? So right. guys, come come jump on board. We need your minds just like you need ours. Okay, emotional guys. Emotional guys, non-emotional guys. Don't worry, I'll come. Okay, all you. all types of guys, emotional yeah. or non. Okay, so we know what the fashion industry looks like now. We kind of understand how you think of technology and fashion, but um, I'd love to hear some of the stories about people who push the boundaries, um, because especially if you can take that and apply it to um, like small entrepreneurs, and if there's lessons in there where they can say, like, this is what the box says the, the edges are, but what can we do to break through that and, and change the world? Sure. Look, it's all about discovering what is, um, like, what is missing in the customer experience, right? So an example that I can share with you right now is an ex-Googler um, that I know that created a brand called Third Love. And what she noticed as a female, how hard it is for all you women in the audience to find a bra that fits for you, right? So you are going to, let's just say Victoria's Secret, you're going inside of the changing room and you're in there in your socks and you come out and you're like, can I please have a 34D? You're really yeah, no, embarrassed. I'm following you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I could, I could you're embarrassed. You're like, this does not need to be this way. So what did she do? She developed a technology that allows you to use your phone, take two selfies in two minutes. They're able to find and um, using data points um, your perfect bra size, and um, it's shipped directly to you in a box. You are that entire experience that you're embarrassed, um, that you don't know what size it is that you're you're looking for is completely gone. Um, so that is something that is going on right now. Are you ready to have your mind blown? Yes. yes. All right. Future. <laughs> Let's get in the future. And this is what's so great about fashion technology is that we're taking on different ideas from different industries, healthcare, um, science. Another interesting person that I know, Andy Goodman, he works alongside a lot of scientists and what they're doing right now is that they are researching ways um, to create these smart materials and smart materials are gonna change our world. So get this, um, imagine a dress that you can tug and it's gonna change from 
like going from work, so it's maybe let's just say it's knee length and you want to go out for um, a date with your hot babe, right? So it, it transforms and it actually shifts its shape and it, 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 and it, and it moves to a, a smaller size. Or you are, yeah, yeah. or, uh, you know, in that sense, smart materials, um, um, materials that can actually change their density. So you are... You are at um, the airport. You're going. You're going from um, Nevada, and you're going to Washington. There's climate change there, and your your outfit, your your jacket is smart enough to change its density, its form, and it turns into a poof, like completely like a down jacket. So that is in our future. Those types of innovations, those types of materials, and what that does is that it just like you. I, I could talk about this forever. Sustainability is in that. Everything. Okay, I'm rambling. We've only got one minute. Got it. Okay, no, I'm just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. That's good. Actually, well, I love, I love the idea of these clothes that change thickness, hardness, and um, length. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's, but like, if you think yeah. bigger, like, what, what is that? What does that create for us, right? What that creates for us is that like, you know, people thinking that's outside pleasure, of the box, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Exactly right. No, so no, Dylan's gonna you be out. You promised we wouldn't you, go penis jokes on. No. <laughs> You're gonna see him at the at the club like pulling on a girl's dress. Like, hey, wait, Christina get said. Get shorter, get shorter, right? <laughs> no, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, all right. The very last question. Um, what can people do specifically to think outside of the box? Look, guys, um, don't sell out on yourself. Um, being an entrepreneur is is tough. Um, creating ideas that are outside of the box is tough. It's not all unicorn eyelashes and gumdrops. It really isn't. Um, uh, I'm sorry. She's from California. It's not as easy for her. Life's not, unicorns as you think. Life's not easy being a unicorn. People expect magic. Sometimes we're not on. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I, I didn't realize there was going to, I didn't mean that, and I didn't realize there was going to be any unicorns in the audience. And what I meant by that is. I mean, it's just, they, they, everyone expects magic when they walk in. I mean, it's a lot of expectation there, for a unicorn. There, there is, yeah. I get, I, I get that. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. But something, what was the question again? I'm completely off. <laughs> I don't even think it matters. Thank you very much for coming out. We appreciate it.